Hi friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a fun lawn fawn card to share with you using some ink blending, lots of die cutting, and lots of paper piecing. We're using the Garden Gnome and Delightful Daisy sets today. They are two really fun and whimsy die sets, and we're just gonna be paper piecing a bunch. I could have colored it with Copic markers, but I decided to go ahead and die cut them in colored cardstock so that I can get a more vibrant and deep color. Now to add some shading, I am leaving the pieces in place as they come out of the die cutter so that I can easily have something to hold onto so that my fingers don't get in the way, if at all possible. All of the inks and cardstock that I'm using today are from Lawn Fawn, and I'll be listing them up in the left or right hand corners wherever it is easier for you to see. And they'll also be provided on the coordinating blog post for this video. As you can see, I'm piecing together the Delightful Daisy. I've covered that entire backing piece with some tape runner. That way we can just pop the pieces right in as we inlay the colored pieces and we won't have to deal with any liquid adhesives after the fact. So I'm popping out all of the ink blended pieces and just inlaying them into the outline that I've prepared. Now I'm working on the petals. I've popped them out in a way that I remember where the location is so that I can easily put them back in place. There are little holes in the brown cone portion and so I'm gonna die cut a white set so that I can put them in. I know this is a minor detail, but it really gives your image a finished look. Okay, next we're gonna be working on this garden gnome. I'm gonna pop out everything and remember to save the eyes and I've also left the belt in because I want his belt to be black. And once again, I'm covering that backer piece in complete tape runner just to make sure it's sticky all around so that outline can be laid on top. And then we can just stick in the inlaid colored portions after. Okay, so now we can ink blend our gnome. I'm gonna work on his hat and his shirt. At first I keep it all together because that just helps me hold the pieces together, but it starts to fall apart and that's okay. At least the parts that are attached are easier to ink blend. So if you can help it, don't pop it out yet. That's just a, a tip for easier blending. Okay, so I've got his hat and his shirt in blue and then his little pant pieces in red there. Then I'll work on the mushrooms, his tiny little brown boots, and then back to the mushroom bases since I wanted to add some brown on those as well. For this little guy's face and beard, I'm gonna be using some Copic markers to color. It's just easier and quicker than using ink colors that may not look right, so I didn't wanna take a chance, and so I'm using Copic markers. They are listed in the top right-hand corner for you. And I know you can't see very much on the beard, but really when you add it to that black outline, it makes all the difference. So details, details, details. Okay, so once we're done with that, again, I am gonna be flooding the background pieces with some tape runner. I'm gonna pop out the outline and then save this tiny little ring because it's gonna be for one of those mushroom spots. So I'm adding the outline now, and then once you pop this red piece in, you'll know exactly where to put that black outline ring. So I'm gonna inlay that red piece and then add its spots, and then we'll know exactly where to put that last little ring for its last spot. So you've just got to make sure that when you are die cutting <laughs> that you save all these tiny pieces so that it'll save you some time from having to die cut some more. All right, so once I'm done with the mushrooms, I'm just going to inlay all the pieces for this garden gnome. I'm attaching his pants now and then his boots. And then we can inlay the hands and the beard, mustache, and his face. Now remember earlier I mentioned to save his eyes when you popped out the black outline. So once you pop in his face here, I know that the backing is already black, but again we're talking details here that really give your die cuts a finished look. So I'm popping those eyes back in to give this die cut a flush look. And now we're gonna work on a belt buckle. I've die cut that section with a metallic gold cardstock and I'm just gonna trim off the belt so that it's just the buckle only, and I'll place that right over his belt, and it just gives a really nice detail. I've also done a lantern that I filled in with some yellow cardstock over the black lantern outline. 
For my background, I'm making it easy by using a panel of blue patterned paper from the Watercolor Wishes cardstock. It's kind of got some shading in it that kind of looks like the sky, so it makes it super easy. And don't worry about that butterfly die cut at the bottom. I will be covering it up with these grassy hillside borders that I die cut with cilantro cardstock. And again, of course, I have to ink blend it and add some shadow and shading, so I'm ink blending it with some jalapeno ink. That very first layer, I'm going to go ahead and make it so that I adhere it to the patterned paper where it'll cover up that die cut butterfly from a previous project. And I'm going to trim this down now before I add the second layer with foam adhesive because I didn't want to make it more difficult to trim later. So I've trimmed down this second grassy hillside border to match the size of the card panel that's there. And I'll go ahead and attach that with foam tape and then kind of lay out where I want my gnome and my flower to go. And I'm attaching those with foam tape as well. Then I'll go ahead and finish my scene by attaching those adorable mushrooms and his lantern. Okay, so now we have our entire scene completed. We just need a sentiment. I've got the Oh Gnome stamp set and I'm gonna be using the sentiment that says, thanks so much. I'm gonna emboss that over a black cardstock. So I'm stamping that out on a piece of scrap black cardstock right now, and I'll add some white embossing powder and then heat set that. I've trimmed it off camera, and now I'm gonna use my T-ruler to help me line it up and then attach it to a card base. And that finishes my gnome and flower scene for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got two more projects to share with you if you are interested in seeing more. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day everyone. Bye!